Welcome again to Rethink. And we have Estelle Mitchell with us today. Uh, and Estelle is in Marbella, and she's got a very, well, uh, a clinic, a health clinic. And if you're not fit, uh, you will be fit after seeing Estelle. And uh, we're going to talk mainly about physiotherapists because she was trained in the RAF. And when they say physiotherapist, uh, they really mean physioterrorist. And you've got the best training, Estelle. I, I had brilliant training. There is absolutely no doubt. Oh, I don't uh, care about what other people are doing. And even up to now, we, I was so fortunate because I don't know if in some of our discussions I'd mentioned to you that there were five places for this physiotherapy, five places for the, for the RAF. And they really like to train boys because obviously boys don't get pregnant and have babies and, and leave the profession. As, as it's as all as changed, as Estelle. Try and keep up. They do now. <laughs> well, luckily, there were only four chaps yeah. that were um, eligible and had the qualifications to join the course. So I got my place. Brilliant. So I, I, so I was so, so lucky. Yeah, they like being woman handled. You were at a distinct advantage. <laughs> uh, now, listen, now, you, you, uh, you, you're quite, oh, I've got, I've got to put this ever so delicately. She's not a large lady. She's quite short. And you'd have thought, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you need muscles to do your job, all the, all the things you do. Well, actually, um, I, I do a variety of things, but also... The, the thing about being not so tall, perhaps, is that short muscles are stronger. Oh, right. There you go. So there well, you go. muscles are connected with bones, and you do a lot of skeletal stuff, don't you? We do, yes. But we're going to save that for the next time. And I, what I want to ask you about this time is, yeah. um, well, you have an infamous blog. And uh, I've got to tell the viewers that uh, she picks up on various things. And one of the th things she's had a rant about this time, and I fully agree with her, is that insurance companies pay physiotherapists and sometimes doctors absolutely, well, almost nothing when they get referred. Is that true? Um, th this, this is, it's, it is a, it's a European problem, in, in mostly, because... Uh, the physio sort of phys training I did um, was much longer, much more in depth, um, and much more demanding. I and mean, it was a three year full time course. And so our qualifications are up there with Australia, Canada, New Zealand. But Europe has a much, it has a very different setup. And their training is really quite basic in comparison to the training that I did. So there's quite a lot of difference and it's still very kind of, it's, it's coming and it's changing and it's, 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 it's getting there and they're beginning to understand, um, uh, you know, the, the professional bodies are beginning to understand that they've got to do this differently because it's it's not a good way of, of working and it's not rewarding for the physiotherapists that have done some training and would like to do more and and progress more um but the kind of main countries that did the physiotherapy that would be my level would be australia new zealand canada and britain yeah so now it, it, this is worth mentioning because the insurance companies are there's good and bad everywhere isn't there? but some of the insurance companies what a joke uh, they've just put their fees off so but, ridiculously little yeah that, you know and people say to me but i i just sat on five chairs and, and then was out the door in five you know in, in about 15 minutes they haven't got time no. They're not always trained. And what happens here, too, is that you can only see a physiotherapist if you've had a doctor's referral. I'm autonomous and I take responsibility for everybody that walks through the door and you don't necessarily need a referral to come and see me. Now, some people who have insurances would need 
to have something signed off by somebody, but I'm autonomous and, and I, so I, you know, live and breathe by the training I had. Yeah, I mean, we, let's go back to the insurance company for a minute because they've actually put their fees up, as I mentioned, from three euros to nine euros. What, what can you do with nine euros in, in half That's an hour? Right. That, that is the difficulty. That's what I'm saying is that the people that, and you know, if you're going to a physio, they've had to rent a room, they've had to heat it or light it, pay electricity, they will have various um, bits of equipment. Uh, but you know, you're going to sit on, on three or four chairs and it's it's still it's still quite quaint without being rude is that it's a very long time since i was training when we used um infrared lamps uh and the only place i've ever seen them since is in one of the very big hospitals here oh in, golly uh, in, in, in here. and i was with somebody who was showing us around the hospital she was like don't look don't look <laughs> 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 infrared lamp just sitting on somebody's shoulder, you know, shining on somebody's shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And that's very nice. I, I don't dispute how nice it is, but it isn't going to fix it if you don't know how and why and all the reasons why you need to be doing certain things or not doing certain things. No, this thing is amazing, actually, because um, both Spain and Portugal, where we uh, spend most of our time, I mean, there's MRI scanners coming out of every front door. Uh, in UK, you've got a queue. Well, the, the thing is that it, the, the problem comes too is that you and people come with their treasures, these, these pictures or a CD, which doesn't work in anything other than a hospital setup because it's quite different. Um, and therefore, I can't always show them and explain their pictures to them. But pictures give us some information. But the reality is that you are going to give me, I'm going to watch what you do and how you walk and how you stand, but you're going to give me the first part of any of my assessments is a, a, a very methodical kind of like, what happened? When did it start? How did it go? What happened next? And so the, the first really third of your appointment is all about this history taking so that I know what we should go looking for to see how we can get you to be better. Well, we've mentioned what insurance companies pay. Um, what sort of cost are you looking um, towards to get a client up and running? I mean, we can't obviously say there will be 10 sessions, but what are normal private consultations in Spain, as an example, for a physiotherapist? For a physiotherapist um, in the in the private in the in the local system in the in the if you were to see a Spanish physiotherapist, are you saying? Yeah. You would you, you would pay. I, I'm uh, not a hundred percent sure. Anything between twenty maybe and dollar fifty. Golly, and um, um, for a private one. If you had a, an assess, uh, a session with me, you would also have much longer. My first appointment is an hour and a half, and it's um, uh, 150 euros. So that we really can dig down. And very often, you don't need more appointments, lots of appointments, because we really kind of worked out where the problem is. I've assessed you very clearly, listened to your story, I see how you move or stand or listen to the difficulties and see if we can um, tune you back in again. And for ongoing treatment? Well, for uh, um, ongoing treatments, then a, a treatment is, 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 a, is an hour and it's 75 euros. Yeah, which in um, UK terms is um, uh, 60 odd euros. Okay, yes. uh, pounds, GBP. Yeah. Right, having cleared that up, um, there are other things that you get into, and one of them is supplements. And I noticed from your recent letters um, that the, they found out the liver is often damaged by people who go crazy with supplements. Well, th th that's the difficulty, is that there's, there's the whole kind of uh, thing about taking extra supplements. But really, if you eat your fruit and vegetables, by and large, you um, should stay reasonably healthy. 
um, there's been a, it's, it's a whole kind of it's a groundswell of supplement taking that's that's very popular at the moment and so that you you should be taking your this and you should be taking your that and your multivitamins the difficulty is that you can swallow these things but your stomach doesn't always know how to to use it unlike if you had your um you know your your egg and spinach or your uh, vegetable soup it knows how to digest and um, get the vitamins and minerals that you require from the food that you eat. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people think, oh, I'm only taking supplements. They may go to their GP, oh, I'm just taking supplements. But some supplement, supplements can be actually more powerful than the real medicine. Well, it can be, and, it, and again, it's, it's that it may not be suiting your um, microbiome. As it were, it might not suit your the organization of, of, of the information that's in your bowel because we're all individuals. Yeah, I know. How do you absorb it and does it go to the right places? There's quite a lot of this um, taking um, calcium to help your bones, but in actual fact, and there are lots of prescribed medications for this as well, but a lot of them. One of the prescribed medications some years ago for osteoporosis, let's say, was actually leaching um, uh, calcium from your bones. So how was that being good for you? Indeed. Um, if you're talking osteoporosis, as an example, and the, uh, well, even today, lots of GPs are saying you've got to drink plenty of milk. You'll get your calcium that way. But others are saying it's the worst thing you can do because milk changes to acid in your stomach and eats your bones. Who's, who's right? Well, the, the, these are the difficulties and, and because there's, there's an era of change and so obviously some of them are still, you know, it's, I don't like to say they're old-fashioned, but, you know, things that you would, your, your granny would have done or your, um, you know, aunts and uncles, hierarchy. Um, and I know, of course, there's what if you come from, it's like saying, if you, you know, if you come from a long lived family, you're likely to be long lived. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you come from a family that's fairly healthy and robust, um, hopefully that assists. Hmm. The other thing you've mentioned um, uh, this week is the very difficult uh, problem of cancer. And there's lots of therapies around. Uh, some uh, are very advanced, but they've not been proven. Uh, some people say, well, the medical establishment needs to start. Um, I'll give you an example, I immunotherapy, uh, which seems to be the, the, the current flavor of the month. Um, and um, that's often given as, as a last resort. Uh, and yet doctors, some of them are saying now it should be the first resort. Uh, and then it could cure the cancer. Um, I think there's, yeah, I think there's a lot of difficulty and there have been many uh, types of treatments for cancer. Cancer is something that we are still trying to understand. Um, I think in the, you know, different people have different types of cancer and different types of situations that uh, might create it. Um, so I think it's, it, it's, it's a difficult one. I mean, I, my father, who was a, a fair-skinned, red-headed uh, chap who, um, like me, liked warm weather, and uh, he travelled to the Far East um, to work with, in those days, it was rubber that was the big commodity, and he worked um, with the rubber company. So he lived in, in Malaysia where you would wear short sleeve shirt and shorts um, for most of your, your day. And it, if you were relaxing, then you might put a pair of long trousers on in the evening or something. But um, he developed um, what everybody treated as a wart uh, because they didn't know anything other to do this was actually um, skin cancer and he developed a malignant melanoma in his, um, just inside his nose 
and um, had to uh, be medevaced, if you like, back to uh, hospital. And, and he went to the Royal Marsden um, in, in the south of England, uh, where they treated him there. Which is a, a top hospital, one has to say. Uh, also, about Spain, the cancer treatment in Spain, I know, is phenomenal. And they're well ahead of most Spain countries. Has, 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 you know, taken uh, healthcare in leaps and bounds. And so the, the, there are many different ways of, of approaching it. And, and there are some very, very highly uh, regarded specialists in that field because, again, like Asia, well, Asia didn't understand that because most people in Asia and darker skins, not the very fair-skinned, um, red-headed, uh, like my dad, <laughs> for instance. He, he should never have been in the tropics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, when we, we're talking Spain and we're talking health treatment, um, one has to be honest and compare it with the UK, and wow, it's miles ahead. Even at a public level, you can still see your doctor on the same day and not wait for three weeks, um, as you can often do in Britain. OK, you might be in a queue, uh, but at least you can um, uh, see your doctor. The other thing, of course, that's come out of the pandemic is uh, you try and see your doctor anyway. It's even difficult to get a Zoom interview. Uh, now, you've got to be so careful with Zoom. It's OK to talk to each other as we're doing now on Zoom. Uh, but you can't. There's certain things you cannot diagnose without your touchy-feely bit. Well, it, it is a little bit difficult, and I have, um, <laughs> in in terms of in the you know in the time before we had um, smartphones and where we could see your face on on the phone, I used to back in the day when people rang me up and said, "Could you?" You know, would you ever have a look at my knee? And I would say, yes, hold it up to the phone till I can see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, of course, you can hold it up to the phone and I can see. <laughs> so, you know, life changes and things happen. And um, But I, uh, and medical incompetence is something that is very important, so that you're not in a room full of people that can, you know, be party to a conversation or... You know that there's enough privacy that you're not overhearing somebody else's conversation. You know that there's a lot of difficulties with, with medical incompetence. Indeed, um, and finally, I'm going to go on to peanut butter. I, I'm on peanut butter at the moment. It's been recommended. I've never been a fan, really. But I tell you what, there's some peanut butter now that is scrumptious, especially the the one with bits in. And apparently, it's healthy. And uh, I think Chicago University, anyway, somewhere in America, they've done a sort of time slot on what foods make you live longer and what things make you live shorter. And one of the things that makes you live shorter is hot dogs. What a shame. <laughs> um, but peanut butter apparently is brilliant. Come on, tell us a I bit about have, that. I am a peanut butter fan and a, especially a nutty peanut butter fan. And I like peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Oh, my goodness. It's true what they say about it then, after all. You're going to tell me you put crisps on the peanut butter, aren't you? Oh, no, I, I, I don't. I like crisps, but peanut butter and jam, is that, that's a little, that, that's a, that's oh, an afternoon. Oh after. Yeah, well, not very good for the um, fattening bit, but that's not your problem. <laughs> so, yes, it, it, it's, it's the funny things that... Uh, you couldn't get peanut butter when I first got down here. There wasn't, nobody knew what I was talking about. Yeah. Well, look, um, uh, physiotherapy is expanded. You do all sorts of things. And we'll be coming back, hopefully, uh, in future weeks and describing things in a little bit more detail. But d don't be frightened of this uh, physio terrorist. She's not that bad. She's quite human. Um, thank you so much, Estelle. Oh, one, one quick thing. One of the good things for your bones, actually, is Tai Chi. So we should all be doing, you know, like the, the Chinese do in the park, our movements and stretching because it moves muscles and tugs a little bit at the bone, which strengthens the bone. Oh, there you go. There you a top tip at the end. Or you could become 
well, I'm going to say you could be landing airplanes. They do that then or in the cabin before they take off. But there's not much of that at the moment, but it'll come back. And uh, we, we're going to stay healthy. We hope, And we're going to also um, mention next time um, about uh, what uh, prevention measures can you take as a doctor when people come in to see you or in Estelle's case with her clinic uh, to avoid getting this uh, dreaded virus. Uh, we'll talk about that next time. Thank you so much. All right, then. Thanks for having me. Bye.